Our scripture will be coming from First Chronicles chapter 4, the same as last week. So if you can please find that, we're going to be reading from verse 9 and 10. I think you probably have, may have it still there in your uh, turn to that scripture from last week. First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and verse 10. Okay, Mama, go ahead. All right, we have it now. Praise the Lord. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, and your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of and the hearing of his word. Let us look to him in prayer. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we do humbly praise and thank you for this another Sunday that you have allowed us to wake unto. Oh, Father God, we ask that you just bless our hearts through your word today, Lord, that we may have something that will help us as we travel along this King's Highway. Lord, we thank and praise you for your goodness and your mercy. Bless each one who has come out today, Lord. And we thank you and praise you for each and every one. In Jesus' name, we pray. We pray. Amen. Thank you. We're in the second part of Do Not Get Complacent with God. This is part two of our series. Do Not Get Complacent with God. Listen, if you are the same Christian 10 years later than you were 10 years ago, you are not growing in your faith. You are not being the person, the man, the woman, the child that God has called you to be because God wants you to pray for your own prosperity. That is what Jabez did in the first part of the prayer. But not only does Jabez pray that God would give him prosperity, he prays that God would give him power. That's the second part of the prayer. That's what we want to see this morning. It's right here in verse 10b. It's right here in verse 10b. And that your hand would be with me. That your hand would be with me. You noticed. Some people, everything that they touch, it works out. Everything they are associated with, everything they participated in, meets with success. Because God has his hand on their life. And listen, you being envious of that. It's not going to stop God from blessing them. Somebody ought to help me preach here. You can't get mad with Reverend Sims, a, a Pam, Alice, Steve, leading all you want. Because God is going to take his gift from him because you don't like it. That's not going to happen. As a matter of fact, God would... Just make it larger. The more you use your gift, the more he blesses you. Somebody ought to help me preach here. Amen. The more you give God your life, the more God will send his power your way so that when you walk in the room, you change the atmosphere. Amen. Mm. And listen, you are so confident in God's power that you don't even know they don't like you. You don't even notice it because you are so busy doing you. You ain't got time for, 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 for who likes you and who doesn't like you and who's on your side, who's not on your side. 
If God be for us, I need, I need four or five more witnesses here. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Fret not yourselves because of evil doers, and neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. They shall soon be cut off like grass. I wish I had a Bible reader here. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up against me to eat up my flesh, just before they got to me, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host, though coronavirus, though my circumstances, though tragedy should encamp, encamp against me, in this will I be confident. Yeah. I, I know I have some Bible reader in here today. Yeah. One thing, one thing, have I desired from the Lord yeah. all the days of my life. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. Yes, he will. You could talk about me as much as you wish, as much as you please. You can talk about me. The more you talk about me, the more I stay on my knees. I wish I had witnesses here. Ju ju you, you just keep throwing dirt on me, and I'll just keep unpacking it under my feet. Keep on being my enemy. I just keep on standing up on your back. And God will raise me to heights yes, that you can't even touch. Uh -uh, good teachers don't have to worry about the principal coming in their classroom. Because they just handle their class. They just handle their business. Come on, come back with me if you can. Yes. Folk who perform well on their job. Never get uncomfortable, never get ill at ease when their boss is around because they do what they always do. That's right. And they are not doing it for a paycheck per se. They are doing it heartily as unto the Lord. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 and 24 says, And whosoever ye do, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Amen. Now, but watch this. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them give the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And, and, and when God's power is on you, they can stop you from climbing. That's right. I mean, they might slow you down, but they can't stop you. And, 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 and if you let them, they may retard your progress, but when God chooses to elevate you, nobody can pull you down. He will make your enemies your footstool. Yes. Who knows what, you guys know what I'm talking about. What it's like to be under God's power, under God's hand. His power will protect you. Listen, when God is on your side, he'll never do anything to catch you by surprise. He will give you what the Bible calls a spirit of discernment so that you will know who don't mean you no good. And, and like many, like my grandmother used to say, you can feed them with a long handled spoon. You stay at your house, I'm gonna stay in my, at my house. You mind your business, I'm gonna take care of my business. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone 
out into the world. I, 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 you know, I love you, but I love you at a distance because if I stay around you, it's going to be some drama up in here, up in here. Somebody ought to help me preach here because I know where I'm going and I'm comfortable in my own skin. And thank God for his keep your hand upon me. Yes. It's right here in verse 10 that if you would keep me from evil, although my name means pain, keep me so that I don't cause pain. That's what Jabez was praying. Somebody ought to help me close here. Jabez prayed for prosperity. Then he prayed for power. And then he asked God for protection. Yes. He prayed a prayer of protection. This is the third thing. Uh, build a fence around me. Uh, because there are some evil people trying to get to me. They are jealous of my upward progress. They are angry about your blessing in my life. And I can't always see the traps, the traps that's been set for me. So I need your protection. I need you to protect me, God. I have to take, make this very personal, this prayer of Jabez. I have to experience it for myself. Uh, I, I asked my wife to let me use her book. It's called The, the Prayer of Jabez by Bruce Wilkinson. When you get a chance, take this book and read it. Let it meditate in your heart so that God can bless you. God can protect you. God can give you prosperity so you could bless somebody else. This is important. People are angry about your blessing that's in your life. And I can always, you can always see the trap. But he will let you know what they are trying to do to you. God will. Because when you meet them, they can even look at you straight in the eye. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you have been there before. But the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The right hand of my righteousness. Joshua chapter 10 verse 25. He says unto them, fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. Yeah. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Wow. Whatever betide you, whatever betide, God will take care of you. I'm trying to close this sermon. But David said in Psalm chapter 37, verse 25, I've been young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God will protect you. I said, God will protect you. Believe that. With all your heart. In the Old Testament, there's a story about the Amalekites. The Amalekites who were going to war against the Israel, the people of Israel. And they said that Israel's God just fight only on level ground. Israel God won't fight us in these mountains. And God told the children of Israel, tell them to come up here where I am. And I will show them that I am not just a God on level ground. That I am a God who can fight yes. in the rugged mountains. And, 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 and you, remember the, you remember that story. 
the Amalekites were identified as a recurrent enemy of the Israelites. And, and, and God protect them. They was making war against them in the wilderness. And Joshua is ordered by Moses to lead Israel in the battle. And Moses just stand and watch from the hillside. You remember the story of Elijah and those prophets at Mount Carmel. He said, how long will you halt between two opinions? If God be God, then serve him. But if Baal, then serve him. You see that in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said to them, Serve God if God is your God. But if Baal is your God, to serve him. Well, and he said, to make this fair, let's have a little contest to see whose God is the real God. He said, let's build an altar. I wish I had a Bible reader here. Let's call on our God and the God who answers by fire. That God will be our God. Right. You're going to help me close this, won't you? And the prophets of Baal started calling on Baal about 9 o'clock in the morning. And Elijah let them call until 12 noon. And then he started making fun of them. He said, maybe Bar Bear is in the bathroom. Maybe Bear is on vacation. Perhaps Bear is all shook up like Elvis. Why don't you call him a little louder? And they call Bear from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And Bear still will not answer. He's on vacation somewhere. Three o'clock was the time for the evening sacrifice. And Elijah said, to make this fair, let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to pour some water on the altar and dig a ditch around the altar and let all the water collect in that ditch. We find that in 1 Kings Chapter 18, verse 37 to verse 33. That's what he said to them. And, and, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the Indian sacrifice that Elijah came near. And the Lord God of Abraham let it be known that this day thou art God in Israel and thy servant. I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and thou hast turned their heart back again. Mm. And that will keep them from evil, that it may not grieve me. That's what Jabez was praying for. He was praying that God would keep his heart in the hand of God, the one who calmed the sea. Psalm 107 verse 39 says, He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Please, family, resist the thought that this prayer, this prayer of Jabez, and it, it's amazing results. This, this is just for great spiritual leaders or super saints. It is for all of us. It is for me. It is for you. For all Christians who are willing. Now the question is, are you willing, as was Jabez, to pray in simple faith? Believing that God knows the unselfish motivations of their hearts and trusting him to bless as promised. Yes, this means that Jabez prayer is for you. It's for me. It's for Mother Sims. It's for Pastor King. It's for Pamela. It's for Calandra. It's for everybody that is listening at the sound of my voice. 
Even Pastor Sharon Roberts is with us today. So I encourage you to start praying this prayer this very day. It will change your life. As you do, I would urge you to be alert from the supernatural results that will at once spring forth often in your life because God answers even as we speak. Now for the Jabez prayer to be effective in our lives, I believe we must remember two things. Let me give them to you. The first thing we need to remember is a prayer of complete dependence of God and his resources. Dependence of God and his resources. Keep in mind, God is the source of our life. So Jabez pray that your hand would be with me because he knew that his own human abilities and efforts could never accomplish what he's asking God to do. Only God can do it. That's the first thing. The second thing, God would never grant a purely self-service with self-serving request. I believe what made Jabez more honorable because the Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. So what makes him, what makes him more honorable and evoked an unqualified answer to his prayer was an unspoken phrase. When his lip says, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. I believe God heard his heart. And God said, I'm going to bless you. And bless others through me. That's what that means. Because you can't be a blessing to somebody else unless God blesses you first. So as we see now, moving out of your comfort zone, part one and part two, Jabez prayed a prayer for prosperity. That's the very first thing we see in the scripture. And then the second thing we see, a prayer for God's power, that you would bless me. And Jabez asked that, that your hand would be with me. So, and then the third thing we see, is prayer for God's protection, that you would multiply my territory. Hmm. Jabez is simply referring to physical land when asking to multiply his territory. He's not asking for that. That's what people think. However, if we look at the lineage of Jabez, we can understand that is is not merely speaking in terms of wealth and prosperity, but in terms of impacting the kingdom of God. Right. He wanted his spiritual territory to increase. And that's what we want, to claim generation for the Lord of Israel. You do not need to claim or reclaim some of the land of Satan, of this world. We don't need that. Okay? So when you pray, ask God to multiply your territory and to do more through you. So you could help somebody else. We learn to submit our will to God and pray like Jabez prayed. And we will begin to see God will move in mightily, mighty ways. Yes, he will. In mighty ways. So remember. God did not grant Jabez his wish. God did not answer his, 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 what he wanted until he prayed. After he prayed, God granted him his request. The word of the Lord for the people of God.